if yeah. there isn't a quorum, you can yeah. do a couple different things. You can, you have a huge group here. You can just chat, can't make any decisions, can't make any emotions. Um, it's not usually the most useful meeting time, but you have yeah. that option. And then the other option is to uh, set another time a certain to meet. And then um, I think, I think the things that we should like that we should check in on that we didn't check in on two weeks ago when we, we ended up canceling too was stipend outreach, just like check-ins. And then um, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns town fair applications are due Friday. And so that that wasn't going to be an other business thing anyway. But like, I think if people just want to say like, I'll be applying or something. Um, and then the things that we maybe need, we can maybe discuss now, but have decisions about later are like partnerships with other community group opportunities. So like the Public Arts Commission reached out like a month ago now. And so we should get back in touch with them. And then I think it's also just like this discussion of like committee, other committees and other city DEI trainings. I don't know if all of you guys get this too, but I feel like we, I just like, people are like, Sh you will know who my organization can hire to do this thing. And I'm like, like, yeah. no, like they don't, they don't exist. Like there's not enough of them. <laughs> like we, we need, there, there needs to be more. And so just like, if there's not, if creative discourse can't do DEI training, um, like if there's other potential processes that we should go through to solicit kind of a list of, of folks who can do those trainings. Um, but maybe holding off on making decisions about that, making decisions about partnerships with other community groups and not discuss our project priorities next steps. How does that sound? Is that worthwhile? Maybe end it early. You can do that. Sure. Should we start with that first one that I was just talking about of the um committee and DEI trainings is have other people been getting this too I'm just like yeah Cameron was do, I get or Cameron do you want to just like explain what the emails were for following our last meeting yeah so I reached out to um creative discourse and sort of asked them what their recommendations were for standalone trainings or sort of trainings that we could bring to stop um like I said before we sort of piloted the whiteness at work training and got um mixed result like mixed feedback on that so that wasn't something that would be easy to roll out to all staff so we're looking at sort of what trainings can be given to all of our staff and um uh creative discourse um let me just pull up the actual email so i'm not like misquoting her she said most of the dei colleagues are moving away from one-time trainings towards longer-term relationships but we could check in with Abundant Sun or CQ Strategies to see if they are able to offer anything or have other suggestions. So there wasn't really a definitive like, yes, we can help you. It was more like, just ask around and see. Um, you know, I think having a longer term relationship is fine. We, you know, we need funding for that, but, um, you know, we can't make any progress if we don't get started somehow. So it just seems um, like there's just more investigation to to do with, um, I guess, Abundant Sun and CQ Strategies. Well, that was my question for you, uh, Cameron. How, well, that's a two-part a, a two question. First is, in terms of the logistics of getting people to go to, to go to uh, trainings. Uh, if it's all going to be a long-term thing, um, is that going to get in the way? Is it going to be harder to recruit people because it's you have to sort of build into their schedules another thing? Well, um, yeah, that was the feedback we got about the whiteness at work training is that it was like longer and it took, you know, multiple classes and they were long. And it was... I don't want people to resent training because it takes yeah. them away from their jobs, right? And they, you know, care very deeply about getting their jobs done. Um, and that was a very difficult thing about that ongoing training. And we have had um, quite a few required large scale training for staff. So might be a good option to look into. I'd love to just share that um, my perception of of doing this work and it's based on what I've been involved with is that, you know, the, 
I think what it requires to really have a personal shift is to do like that long term. Like I did a, I, I've done two different study groups on two different books. I was about to join a third one um, that was going to start in a couple of weeks. Um, and but and I think that that is what is is really helpful. Is like the constant reminder and a constant self reflection because as white people, that's where we I think we really need to start is looking at our own biases and understanding how we how we uh, continue to impose those biases and 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 prop up the existing structures that are racist <laughs> in uh, in our systems, right? Um, so that doesn't solve the problem, but that's my, I think that's actually a better way to, to do something. But I also think in the workplace, like it's extremely difficult to ask people to do that. I mean, yeah, I was just looking back through, because we sent out an RFP that was due um, March 18th of 2020, which is funny to remember. Um, but the people who answered the RSVP included CQ strategies. And that's really, that's Kathy Johnson, who lives in Montpelier. And like, I feel like I, Lauren and I have both done trainings with her organization through our work. And um, maybe others of you have too. And um we ended up getting three proposals. So it was um, Gannon Morris, um, Gannon and Morris, which I, I have not heard of other folks using using them. And then um, Equity Solutions, which I think is based in Brattleboro, as well as CQ um, Creative Discourses. And um, so they're all kind of like, you know, we really wanted someone Vermont based. And obviously the goals of what we wanted to have from that process was much more um like strategic planning oriented rather than like training oriented but um I, I know I think that's I think CQ strategies is more training oriented than strategic planning oriented and I could be wrong there but um I guess I'm just like I think this is something that is probably gonna be really helpful you know you don't have to go through a RFP for the city right like you can just like reach out and schedule like talk to folks and schedule some kind of okay um, but then also, yeah, just like thinking that could be like a resource that we could provide at, at um, CJAC is like on our website. Like if you want to learn more, we're not the people to do this, but <laughs> reach out to these other groups, for example. Um, I just feel like the past like three months I've gotten like seven different requests from folks and I'm just like, I don't, I haven't done that thinking. Mm -hmm. um so we we're not making any decisions but are there any other like next steps or discussion around this i'm sorry i've got the train um you know that's something that i can continue to push forward is just see i mean that's like a goal of mine anyway is to to get training for staff so i'll just continue investigating that and I'll reach out to CQ strategies. Stipend outreach and next steps. I've been seeing posts on Front Porch Forum. Um, I, I don't know if you have any numbers, updates, Cameron, of, of applicants or anything else. And if, um, which if there's any more discussion around stipend outreach we have four people i think off the top Are of my head um who signed up which is two more than the last time i talked to you so yeah. we doubled our participation <laughs> do we know of any like new applicants has that um, been a recruiting tool we have had we have quite a few um committee uh why can't i think of the word Thank anyway, you. We, have, we have lots of applications to okay. do tonight for right. council. Um, they, I, there's no question on our form yeah. and uh, about that yet. So um, I don't know, but. Um, they have to become a committee member first and then they can apply for the stipend, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How has the posting and outreach been going folks? Well, I did my the one the, yeah. the ten days or so that I was supposed to do it, and 
they never kicked me off. So yeah. I guess that I, I guess it was, and I did follow up to see when it when it when it turned up. And I tried to get different times of the day, um, so, but uh, it's it's easy, and apparently they don't care uh, how many times we you know we tried to do this. Um, the, the 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 question is you know is it it it's worth the effort it's not much effort right. but right. Um, do we want to keep doing it reminding people um, it might be it might be useful to well we can't we have to we can have to hold off at any vote at any action anyway but um, to see the results of the city council this this today tonight in in um, choosing new people for boards yeah. So, yeah then we can see if there's much of a, a need for it right can't think of another i mean i think front porch forum is the one that's easiest to do and um since they don't they don't they don't monitor the number i, I think the newspapers all would say well we did this we we just uh, and actually, when I sent the press release to uh, VT Digger, I got a very nice note um, from, uh, oh, what is her name, uh, Cassandra, saying, oh, I just wrote an article about that. So yeah. um, they didn't put in the letter, my, my press release, but that was okay. We got a, a, a full page, or I think it was a half page oh. article instead. Yeah. Better. Yeah, I think we know for elections, like people need to be reminded nine times to actually vote for a candidate. And so it's like probably more than that to like actually submit an application and to remember that they wanted to do this thing and make this commitment. <laughs> it's a much bigger commitment. So I'm just continuing to bash people over the head with this offering. Seems good. Okay. Um, other business, Vermont League of Cities and Towns, Town Fair. I think, um, let me pull up that email. Thanks for getting that to us, Cameron. So um, they're looking for applicants for their welcoming and engaging communities cohort. Um, and they have like a town fair panel discussion on equity, which will also give admission to the town fair. Applications are due on Friday. And then the town fair itself is October 7th in Killington. Um, and they're looking for like, if your town has a story to tell, they want to hear it. And so it looks like it's like two different asks. It's like an ask about like Montpelier's justice, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging success story. And it's like a engaging communities cohort of um, uh, like eight two hour workshops um, paired with opportunities for municipalities to collect key inclusion and belonging metrics by surveying officials. No, I can't, I'm trying to read and do too many things. Um, do you know more about this Cameron too, or have you? I really don't. Yeah, I've never been before. Or if anyone's been before or knows anything more. I went in like oh. 2019 or into 2020 and uh i mean it's just a it's just a conference it's it's not but it's like a local conference to get to know folks um it might be worthwhile to go to that that talk yeah that panel is anyone planning on applying no, we I don't think it's available. I, I mean, I think someone from, I don't know, who, like who from staff, and then I think usually at least one or two counselors go. So if we wanted to, you know, ask anyone if they, if there's any like panels we particularly hope they might go to or connections to make or anything, or like if they've got handouts or yeah. <laughs> you know, like we could, we could certainly like pass along a message. I think with the work commitments, I can't do it that day, but yeah. Um, I know Bill is going. And maybe Kelly, our finance director. 
Bill and Kelly. Do you know if they got this email? Should we forward it to them? Or? I I guarantee you they got it, but I will okay. forward it to them again. <laughs> Great. So maybe I'll just respond to her and kind of give the update on where we're at. Um, and I just got a text back from Helen that she's planning on joining, I think. So maybe we will get, or should we just wrap up and call it a day? <laughs> it's, uh, it's up to y'all. Well, I'd like to just quickly think about, we, we weren't able to get a, um, a very large response to the last time we tried to get the committee chairs to, to meet and follow up. But I'm wondering if it makes sense to, for us to kind of create a list of the, the committees where we think we, we have most, the most to offer them, whatever that might be, and really focus our efforts to work with, with, with committees in, in town. Um, and this is so it's something to think about. And then, where, you know, which would those committees be and what, what would be our criteria for kind of, in a sense, targeting a few places rather than just putting out these big general invitations to which nobody knew or very few people uh, reply. Hi, Helen. And yeah, I think like the Public Arts Commission reached out to us like a while ago now and was wanting to find ways to collaborate. And so does anyone want to like connect with them directly or yeah, what's like, do we have next steps with with that? Did everyone get that email? I could do that. Who's, yeah. who's, the, per, who's the contact person for that? Word Joyce is their chair and Josh Jerome is their staff support. And Michael will connect. So that's great. That was like something that's been hanging over my head for like over a month <laughs> so we can respond to them and get them in contact. That's great. Thank you. And then, but Michael, so like, yeah, are you thinking of like, how, what are the other groups that we want to be doing that concerted? Like we go to their meetings, they come to ours and we, you know, like, I guess like Carol, how is this working for you? Do you like, you know, should we come to your meetings too? Or are, you know, housing or other groups? Does that make sense? Are you looking for my feedback right now about I, and if you have any thoughts or like, you know, you've been coming to the, you've come to a lot of these meetings. And so just like, would it be helpful if we came to your meetings or if we set up a more specific partnership or, um, or. I actually hadn't thought about, I hadn't thought about, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. I, I had, hadn't really thought about that, but Cameron is part of our advisory board. That would be the meeting. Right. And I, so I think we already have that connection. So I, I, and if anybody else wanted to sit in on one of our advisory board meetings, that would be great if we were, you know, especially if we were having a conversation about DEI, which we, what we've been doing at those meetings is they've wanted to, the members wanted to create a study group on the book called um, the little book of race and restorative justice. So we've been doing that. Then they took two months off this summer and we're going to finish up that book. Um, but I, I think it would be helpful actually to, if we wanted to formalize a relationship and keep doing the work together. And I've told Cameron this a few times that, you know, on behalf of the city, I would like to be part of how the city rolls things forward, if at all possible, if I can fit it into my schedule. And if there's a place for me to do that, because, you know, just because I'm part of the leadership team. So, um, and that's part of the reason that I come to these meetings is because I want to know like what are the priorities, what's going on, and you know how I can be helpful. Um, I, I do want to say that because I'm getting, you know, I'm also hearing that, you know, the, the whole idea of the recruitment thing. And I'll just say that what the thing that worked for us when we were 
looking for volunteers, I think was that that Sally wrote, and she just wrote a, two sentences about her experience as a volunteer. And that, we had 21 responses to one front porch forum post. So, um, and then we've gotten, I think, eight, vol eight new volunteers out of that. So I, I think, you know, if, if rethinking, like if you just say, oh, come and volunteer with us, we'll tell you about the opportunities, that's one thing. But if you, if you have something specific and you can tell a story about what the experience is gonna be like, I think people better connect to that. And I think most people aren't looking for the money. I, and I think, you know, getting people to join who maybe need the financial support or would take advantage of the financial support, I think is gonna happen through direct relationships. So I think that's where going to places where those people are for however that works out, maybe at like the, you know, the, the Wednesday farmer's market at the, at MSAC or wherever it is that those people are, food pantries or something um, to do some outreach there. I mean, if you're looking for people with lived experience, I think that's, a, you're gonna have better potential um, connecting with people. And I think it's gonna be relationship related. I guess like Michael, are you thinking, do you have a, like a more thoughts on a proposal of who to do outreach to for partnerships or why or? Um how to go about that process? Well, I can think of the, you know, the committees that are most closely associated with issues that we're concerned about, the housing the um, group, um, you know, what was the other, well, uh, the tree board has some interesting issues about, or questions about where to plant trees in places where there aren't any trees and, you know, um, like in public housing and stuff like that. So, uh, and John Snell is very tuned into those kinds of those kinds of questions. So I think if we look around and just sort of quietly approach the chairs of of, of uh, each each of the committees where we think there's a, an um, an obvious connection, they might tell us what they would want from it from us, if anything. And I know we've got like the list of committees and we have this idea of going to all the committees as well. And so, and that was just like, that's not going to be possible, but like. Right. There are 30 committees and that's yeah. a lot. <laughs> when I but tell like, people there are 30 committees in, in, in the population of our town, they said, well, who's not on the committee? <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, you're on all of them. So that no, makes it easy. <laughs> so. No, I'm not anymore. This is the only co committee I'm still on. and The only? Uh, wow. Yeah. Sorry. And actually, my term is up in September. Whoa. Um, okay. Um, and I and I don't know if I don't know if there's a term limit, but I've been on since the beginning, and um, you know maybe maybe I I am ineligible. I don't know who knows that. I don't think so. I do, and there's no term limit for y'all. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for being that institutional knowledge, Michael. Um, I mean, but yeah, do you, do you have, like, should we be going to the housing board, the tree board, potential, you know, the advisory board um, that Cameron's on already? Are there other specific next steps for this conversation? I'll send you all their meeting schedule. Okay. Well, I think the, the for, um, there's that and just sort of getting the list of all 30 committees in front of us and sort of going through them and, you know, each of us doing a kind of check. Well, I can think of a way in which we might connect. Then we can at least narrow down, do that kind of narrowing down before we, before we, have, we start sort of groping around but using personal contacts. I'm just seeing if that's accessible enough to do that right now in the meeting mm -hmm. yeah it's easy to get the list just that we just have to sort of sit down i think each of us sit down and just think about you know is this one that we would that we would like to con connect with and another way we could think about it is and maybe this is something like that cameron um could help us with, but like, especially as we get to strategic planning and budget, like 
like what are some of like the big projects that are coming up and what are you know equity implications of those so you know what are like some either kind of higher profile higher budget like i don't know things that are going to be like big projects the city's taking on and you know like the um elks property or you know like I, maybe picking a few big projects that are going to have big implications for the city as opposed to like trying to focus on entire committees and their body of work could be another way we could think about it yeah that was like our first agenda item so let's maybe now that we've got quorum circle back to that of like discussing project priorities and next steps and just i think we've been kind of stuck i feel still very stuck on like how do we make that decision and i think we were like let's hi let's bring in a consultant to help us with that again and then it's like or if the city knows what the big and what these things are can we just name them and work backwards from there so we've got the elf property yeah what are housing um housing and homelessness right um what are the other pieces i guess lauren you probably know off the top of your head um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, them. I think we could go th probably through the strategic plan and look at yeah. <laughs> like what's the things I think your idea of like, what are the criteria we would use to pick and like, I mean, how many projects do we have capacity? If we wanted to go that route, which to some degree, I feel like we need a little bit of like proof of concept to like work on a few projects and then our work with other committees will we can demonstrate that, like what what that looks like and the value it can bring um right now i think it's just too amorphous for probably a lot of people but um yeah so i mean you can go through it's like environmental stewardship so there's like our net zero and there's you know like confluence park there's there's so much going on so i think you could maybe look through that um the strategic plan is one place that has a lot of the like high profile projects and that will be updated we're doing that in is that scheduled for like october cameron so september actually september so september it's basically 2023 it's ridiculous <laughs> um well something that you that lauren just said in passing so rang a bell. The question I have is, well, what do we bring to this? What is it that we are offering uh, uh, except sitting in on their meetings? Well, I can speak for myself and thinking about like the Elks Club, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have, you know, a recommendation for a project manager going to council tonight and how that group, that project manager group interacts in that public sphere, right? Because half the project is really getting public feedback on ideas and concepts and making sure that we are and they are contacting the people who are most likely to be affected or the folks who um, maybe are traditionally overlooked in public process, I think is gonna be a huge deal. And I think we'll need like assistance to get there, right? And so, I think that this group is an amazing resource to do some of that boots on the ground work too, if needed, right? Like CAN can do so much. This group could help CAN, could help like really make sure that other perspectives are being um, listened to and brought to the table. I see that as like a huge benefit of this kind of committee because you've already looked at some of the issues and you have recommendations from creative discourse about groups that need to be brought to the table, like English as a second language groups that we have, which a growing community in Montpelier. Um, and bringing them to the table, I think that's a would be a huge benefit. And I was putting like the budget impact worksheet that we developed in 2020, which I th is like, a, not quite a one to one, but like, has some of those broad questions that could then be more specific to these projects. 
and just like a list of marginalized populations to think through of how this is going to impact kind of thing, potentially. Well, I have a question about um, Cameron's, Cameron's point. When we uh, worked with Creative Discourse, they, they would not tell us who they spoke with. So if we're going to now start right. trying to help other committees, we we really should be able to get access to some of those names so that we can pass them along. I, I mean, otherwise, I think we're as much in the dark as anybody else. But I mean, we know what the I mean, yes, but they told us they're not going to give us those. So that's like a moot point. Right. So how do we recognize that they spoke to X demographic? How do we go and do the work to find out how to contact that demographic? I think that's part of the work. Um, they're not going to do, they're not going to give us that information. So we just got to figure out a different way to get to that. There are, you know, uh, aff aff uh, affinity groups that we can work with or talk to in a respectful way. Remember when we, um, this was like years ago at this point, but we had also created like mailing lists of our own affinity group contacts yeah. and um you know it's i think it's time to to re look into those i just don't i just don't think it's as as um dire as that michael i think we're gonna be fine okay. So just to summarize this, it sounds like the, the resources that we can provide are like asking the right questions, making sure folks are engaging people who potentially are going to be most impacted by these decisions. We have some lists of what that could look like, and we can just do specific personal outreach as well. Build relationships. Yeah. So I very embarrassingly have not read, I don't think I've read over this strategic plan or if I have, I've forgotten it. And so and I'm like, oh, that's a, oh, that's new. And so um, I don't feel really ready to like facilitate this conversation of like, where do we want to focus? Um, we have like kind of like the strategic plan and then we have like the list of, of committees um, and I'm not really sure how to integrate those. If that makes sense. If anyone has any ideas, is what I'm I'm looking for facilitation support. Oh, do I not have the right thing up? No, you do. There's oh, okay. the live. Um, we have a live dashboard that gives updates on each focus goal. The dashboard is my baby, and I care very much about it. So I want everyone to stare at it all the time. So beautiful, Cameron. Thank you. Really, really <laughs> great. <laughs> Could you send a link to that, to the dashboard? In the chat. Yeah, OK. I'm sorry, I don't look at this every day. Now I know what I need to do. Well, technically it only gets updated quarterly, so you're not, you're okay. You're okay. hanging in there. Yeah. <laughs> Still embarrassing for me. <laughs> I'll forgive you. I mean, I think this could be something if you want to, y'all come like maybe next meeting, look this over and then come back with some of your like the things that you think are the most impactful that are coming up in the next year that you want to sort of focus more on. There's also tons of opportunity if you want me to bring other staff members to talk to you about projects and sort of the impacts of those projects and maybe help them think through like, who is this going to be impacting most? That would be, I can do that too. Just let me know. Is the Elks Lodge... Is that that's happening? Like, does that make sense as a place to start? Just because it seems like we know that that is a process that's going to be happening, or it, or we're like reviewing the proposal now, and so it makes sense to hold off for a little. Yeah, bit. we've got so our RFP 
came back. We've had four okay. responses. We interviewed two on Monday and we made a recommendation to council yesterday. So that's, I will get, I will pull that up and link that for y'all. Okay. Um, so no, that is definitely happy, happening. Council will vote to approve or not the recommendation tonight. Um, if you click into agenda items and files at this link, you can see item 10. We have all four proposals linked along with our recommendation and the cover sheet. So that is a big project it's coming up. Very exciting. I mean, it does seem like a particularly good one because it's going to be, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity where public input could shape this in a way that is maybe like more so than many other projects where it's more like maybe tinkering around the edges or something. And this one, it really feels like public input will be really important. So like what, who is participating and how is that um, input being considered and um, and stuff. So it feels like one where, you know, and it's like touching on housing and recreation access and like um, there's a lot of components to it. So um, I, I think it could be a particularly good one to kind of really think through like the what we were talking about a few minutes ago about like what, how we could help, you know, try to support groups to do more robust public input processes and think through proposals and planning in a way that really takes that input into consideration in a um, more thoughtful way and whatever. So I, it seems like a really good one to me, um, but maybe like, I like the idea of everybody looking through since um, not everybody has spent lots of quality time with a strategic plan like Cameron and I have. But <laughs> um, so like looking through that and seeing like what else jumps out to people, but that one seems kind of like a really good one to be on our list uh, for now um, from my perspective. I agree. It's the biggest profile project we have, I think, that involves a public component besides maybe Confluence Park, but this one is um, doesn't have a plan yet. So that's the exciting part. Michael, how does that sound? Knowing, yeah, okay. Yeah. Helen, thumbs up. Cool. So it's kind of a combination of this like reviewing project priorities, next steps and partnerships with other com community groups. Um, Checking on committee, other DEI training, stipend outreach, other business. We've, we'll, I think we've, we've captured kind of all of the big things. I think just going back to kind of our business meeting, our, our meeting, what am I trying to say? Are like our <laughs> meeting regular, our meeting business? I don't know, like reviewing our uh, minutes. Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry. That was so uh, I pull up the minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so again, these meeting minutes are from July 27th because we didn't have a quorum at our last meeting. So it's summertime, summertime in Vermont. Go on vacation. Yeah. Until tomorrow when school starts, you know, like. <laughs> Well, you want a motion to uh, uh, approve? I'll make that motion. Michael makes a motion to approve. Anyone want a second? I second. Helen seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Um. Okay, and I'm sorry, let me just pull up the agenda again. So I think our next steps here are, um, I will pass along the update about the VLTC workshop. 
Um, Michael will connect to the Public Arts Commission. Um, and then we're all going to review the strategic plan and the city committees um, kind of side by side and see where we want to start with partnerships and engagement and reach out to Cameron if there's other kind of interim things uh, or like other other outreach that we should do in the next, you know, two weeks before our next meeting um, to have more conversations. And then we'll be applying kind of our equity assessment tool and connecting folks to others in our community through our personal relationships, recognizing that the Elks Lodge could be a good place to start, but that we might want to, uh, for public process, but that we might want to also be looking at some other things. Did we get through it all with 10 minutes to spare or how are folks feeling? Anything else we should talk about? Shana. So um, as I mentioned to Shana ahead of time, I was uh, I wanted to come to the meeting, just get updates on how things are going with CJAP and without the intention of writing anything about this. Yeah. Um, so uh, this has been helpful to me. And just uh, for looking down the road, uh, for example, when you're talking about the stipend outreach, that's, you know, that's something on my list to do a follow-up article about how how the stipends are going. So, uh, Shana, if you or Cameron or somebody else wants to con contact me, at a point when you have, you know, it's like some clear information to work with. Like right now, so you have, you know, you've had four people sign up and you have some other things in the works. Um, but, but it helps if, it's, if there's a particular event or number report or something that um, makes it easier to focus and article but so definitely you know over the next couple of months we want to do something for the bridge about um about how the stipend program is going uh also with the uh, dei training uh, there are a lot of possibilities for doing an article about that too about what the city has done what what approaches it's taking and you were talking about you know the differences between one-time trainings and the the challenges of doing ongoing trainings, but you know that again, taking a, doing an article about DEI training is a another good possibility. And if you have ideas of, at a specific time, again, as opposed to writing a random article when there's a, you know when there's some some specific thing happening that um, really increases the news value of it. So those are, you know, in particular, the stipends yeah. and DEI training, two, two uh, articles I could do in the near future when you have some specific things. So just, so let me know on that. Thanks. I mean, I think you heard we're definitely like in this transition time where we're like working on playing these things out and working on figuring out what's next. And so I think for the stipends, yeah, definitely like at least two weeks as we got these new people joining it, you know, joining new right. vacant seats and then um, kind of seeing where that's going and then remind, I think just reminding folks sounds great. And then um, for the training, I'm trying to like, I don't know, I don't think there's like specific outreach that is like gonna be, you know, specifically helpful around that unless someone else has, other thoughts but um I think like right again just similarly like nothing urgent right now that we're like Tom can you write this story but like potentially in a couple of months but that I think we're yes yeah, just still trying to settle things out the, the general yeah. topic is uh, I, I understand it may be it may be difficult to have a specific timing for an article but it really is it that's a major thing you know the 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 training of uh, city staff uh, and and, and cre increasing awareness of uh, dei issues and and uh, helping people to do a better job so it kind of underlies a lot of the work that you do so cool yeah thanks yeah. we will stay in touch and thanks for coming yeah. thank you so I wanted to just sort of confirm, we've got sort of the same um, agenda topics, except next time we'll be sort of reviewing um, the strategic plan 
and talk about the Elks Club project a bit, talk about stipend outreach, and then follow up on training outreach that I'm going to be doing. Does that sound right for an agenda? Good. So your next meeting is scheduled on the 7th, if that sounds right for everybody. Right. Um, also, this news is public, but I did put in my um, notice and my last day with the city is going to be September 22nd. So I've got two more meetings with y'all. Oh my gosh. So yay, but yeah. also sad. Yeah. So just letting y'all know, so it's not coming as a surprise. Disappointment, yes. Surprise, no. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, but what are we going to do without you? <laughs> Selfishly is where I'm at. That's my knee-jerk reaction. So I will feel more just like, yeah, more gratitude and yeah, and grateful. Thank you. Um, big shoes to fill Cameron yeah I'm gonna be very missed in this role thank you thank you thank you thank you we should come together in person and just you know <laughs> say goodbye <laughs> to you if you want <laughs> yeah I'm down we could have a meeting in person yeah I mean, not a meeting, gathering, <laughs> um, party, <laughs> celebrate. Cameron and the the lack of this committee is productivity forever. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> the end of the end of our um, success. No, that's not true at all. Just kidding. But I'm. That's I'm happy for you. Think, sorry to. So. Yeah. I'm just taking it in. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but yeah, maybe on the 21st, does that make sense? Or on the seventh? Does anyone have any half preference? You can bring some scones. Uh seventh is better for me because I will be out of town um on the 21st. Great. And I'm not part of the committee, but I would love to attend on the 7th as well. I'll also be out of town on the 21st. So I would plan to drive that early to Montpelier <laughs> my home for that. <laughs> All right. So I should plan for sort of scheduling a meeting room for that morning. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Thank you. Bring coffee and scones. I don't know why I'm thinking of scones. I'm just like, that's the thing that I used to make in the before days <laughs> when we would have morning meetings. <sighs> Not on Zoom. But... Okay. Okay. We'll see you guys in two weeks in person. Wow. Great. Yeah. Great. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.